Howdy, howdy, howdy. Good morning. Good morning. I'd like to welcome everyone to church this morning. Um, it's a good place to be in the house of the Lord today. Um, as everyone's uh, still coming in, we'll uh, just do a few announcements today to get started. And as we've announced for several weeks today, um, is our going to be our world missions offering. Uh, so as you leave today, you notice there's two buckets on the table. One says missions offering, and the other one says tithing offering. So uh, make a note of that on which one is which. Uh, but today is our world missions offering, and uh, Creole Baptist around uh, the world is collecting for our international missions department, uh, which supports a little over 100 missionaries um, in several countries. And, and I know um, outside of North America, I looked the other day, I think there was um, around 800 different churches outside of North America. So um, the mission work of the Creole Baptist continues to grow, um, and we like to support that as a church. Um, a few things coming up, if you look at your upcoming events, as we've kind of put out here for September and October, um, two weeks from today, which will be September 13th, um, we're going to have Edwin Hayes with us, and uh, Edwin is Executive Secretary for the Ohio State Association of Federal Baptists. Um, he's held that role for probably about 30 plus years, and um, he is set to retire next June, and so uh, we're looking forward to have him here with us um, in two weeks to be able to preach um, in the service, 
And uh, I know he's held revivals uh, several times here at the church. And so um, I'm looking forward to being much in prayer of that service. Uh, the week after that, Sister Monroe, she was here during our revival, and she'll be singing here in the service. Um, and then the last Sunday of September, um, Leroy Smith with the Gideons will be here presenting. So um, we have several things coming up uh, next month. So be much in prayer for that um, as we look forward to doing the Lord's work and uh, excited for the services that we're going to be in. Um, so this time we're getting into our worship service today. Um, and uh, Lee Pernice, can I ask you to open us up in prayer as we go into this?
Well, this was unspoken request. Give a sign of uh, lifted hand. And uh, Danny Cordell, will you take us a little bit? May be seated. Um, at this time, we've got a short video to show. Um, Samaritan's Purse. said was any different. Um, she said that uh, they're going to have a little something to get together. I'll be bringing some in, some of the Samaritan's Purse shoe boxes. She has some of those to give away. I think they're too small, but she'll have some anyway. And uh, there's, still, there's no, still no size limit to the shoe boxes. I keep worrying about every year that they're going to make us go to the Operation Christmas Child shoe boxes. But so far, we have it. So um, the pickup week will be November 16th through 23rd, so we're a little earlier this year. And we're going to bring in, like we did last year, some starter boxes for anybody who wants to pick up those and just finish them off. Uh, start a little early, that way maybe we can still get some good deals and school supplies. Um, and again, if you don't feel comfortable shopping, um, if you can always make a donation, like you can earmark it and put it in the bucket, maybe we can donate towards the shipping if you want to do that. Or uh, if you want to give something to mom and I, we'll be happy to do some shopping for you if, if that's not something you feel comfortable with this year. Um, but other than that, um, no big changes. And November 16th, I'll look and see what date they'll have to be here. That's probably a Monday, but I'll check on that. But if you have any questions, just let me know. Thank you. 
the Inhofstein of love. It's families, it's churches, it's hundreds of thousands of volunteers that help make Operation Christmas Child so successful. And they couldn't do it without them. We can't stop that guilty of God for something that didn't do that. It has absolutely impact in the world by the kingdom of Christ. I mean, what better thing can you do than be involved in the field of God? Some of them go by train, some go by camels, some go by ships. Three boxes go all over the world. And that is only the beginning. After receiving the shoe boxes, the children will be invited to go to the greatest journey, which is the 12 Nestle Discipleship Program, where they learn about the greatest gift, which is Jesus Christ. Church have collected for several years now. Um, did I miss the collection day? I mean, miss it. The collection week is November 16th to 23rd, but usually I have them back Sunday before, so I can have time to get it in that week. Okay. I also didn't notice, I don't know if these were in last year's, when you pick up the brochure, on the inside it has a can then do not send little list, so that might be helpful too. Like I said, I haven't noticed that before, so maybe that's something you can share. So we're looking at uh, probably the second week, it looks like, in November is the collection week. Um, so we have uh, a few weeks between now and then, so be much in prayer for that um, and uh, begin to start preparing. Um, at this time, Rochelle is going to come and uh, sing for us today. I'm afraid of nothing because I'll be 
scriptures and message along with that um, idea of being unfinished um, and why you turn there. When we look at uh, the book of Philippians, here we see Paul writing to this church um, in Philippi, and, and this book has four chapters. It's one that is encouraging this church. Um, he's actually thanking the church for the gifts and the, the things that they have done in support of him. Uh, we thank Paul as a missionary, one that, that went on uh, several three missionary journeys and started several churches as we see him as a missionary, and he is thanking the church in Philippi that has been supporting him um, and taking care of him. And so our opening text in Philippians chapter 1, uh, we'll begin here in verse 6. <clears throat> All right, he says, Be confident of this very thing, that he which hath began a good work in you will perform, perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Let us pray this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you today. Thank you again for bringing us through another week. Uh, thank you for bringing us back into your house. We know last week uh, we may have battled different things in our independent lives, Lord, but we're back together worshiping and celebrating what you've done for us. And be with us during this time that we can draw from your word. Speak to our hearts. Find us where we may be. We love you, Lord, today. In Jesus' name, amen. So when I think about the topic of unfinished, do you have any projects at home that, that's left undone, maybe kind of unfinished, that you've started, um, maybe priorities have changed with the virus going on and you just haven't circled back around to them um, and finished those projects? Um, I think all of us, time is kind of um, short as far as what we have. Um, time is valuable for us. And uh, at times we may have a lot of great intentions or good ideas and we start different projects and, and sometimes those projects are left there and they're unfinished. Um, I was thinking at home, Michelle's getting on me, uh, uh, I started a, a bathroom 
fix up two years ago, and it's still unfinished. Uh, we got most of it done, but I just never put the baseboard and the trim board in and just finished it all. Um, in, in your house, it may be something different. Uh, maybe it's a book you started, and uh, you put it down for one reason or another, and you never circle back to that book and finish that book, uh, finish that reading. Uh, maybe it's a degree that you started in your life that you never finished to completion. Uh, whatever it is, we find in our lives that there may be several different things that we may find ourselves with all the best intention, but life hits us, time hits us, priorities change, and, and work that we began may be left undone. And so that's kind of our topic and our subject today, of being unfinished. Um, and as I look through different scriptures, I felt while Paul is telling this tr- uh, the church of Philippi in verse 6, of saying, be confident of this very thing, that he which hath began a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. And so, looking at that text, what does that mean? That, that Christ has began a good work in us. Um, and I underline in my Bible, good work. It's just not a work that Christ has began in us, but it is a good work that he's began with us. When we think that, that what Christ has done on the cross, of dying for our sins and making us being able to have intercession with God and being able to find forgiveness through uh, the suffering of Jesus Christ and the shedding of blood, when we accept Christ into our life, that good work begins in our life. Now, we understand that in that moment, we are immediately forgiven of our sins. In that moment, if something happens to us, um, being covered by grace, um, in that judgment that we would be able to to, to go into heaven at, at that time, um, when we are saved, depending on how we live our life from there on out. But when we look at that, a relationship with Christ is one that grows. It doesn't end with just the fact that we kneel at the altar when we accept Christ into our heart. It's a growing relationship that we have with Him. And I think we addressed this several weeks ago. Um, when we think of even our relationships in life with our spouses, uh, if you go back when you first started dating your spouse, uh, you may have loved them, you've done great things for them, gifts and different things, but that love blossomed into something so much more, to the fact that you wanted to spend the rest of your life with them. And that love that began to grow, that I think all of us can go back today and say that we love our spouse more today than when we first met them or when we first got married. And why is that? Because we went through hardships with one another. We, we, we've kind of began to go through the test of time with one another. And that bond continues to grow. You see, that is the way it is when we have a relationship with Christ. It one is that should be growing. And, and we should be growing our relationship with Christ. Christ has began a good work in us. And so now we should be able to be of such that we continue to grow into him as we go through. And and Paul is assuring them of knowing that work that he's began with you and in you, that he will perform it until the day of Christ. You see, we know with confidence that Christ will not leave us in this world. Christ says that, that we will have trials, we will have tribulations, we will have these things in this world, but he didn't leave us comfortless and he's there with us. As we go into this world. I think of this work of being unfinished. And when we relate this to missions. And we think about what is going around in this world. There's a lot of work that began when we go back to the apostles. When we go back to to Paul. He was an early missionary. And the gospel began to spread throughout of all the area there. To the day we have today. 2,000 years later that we have it here in America. And it it is such... um, Anyone has the ability in America to go to church if they so choose to do that. But other parts of this world doesn't have that freedom. Other parts of this world doesn't have that the gospel available to them. Of all the progress we've made in 2,000 years, I, I read something the other day, just in this last year, that the Bible has been translated into the 700th language in this world. And you may say, that's awesome. We have 700 different translations um, uh, of of the Bible. And I'm not talking like King James or New King. I'm talking about language translations. 700 different translations of um, of the Bible in this world. But do you know how many languages there are in this world? A little over 7,000. Now, 
by and large, those that's translating the scriptures are uh, going after the languages that are more widely spoken, so we know that. Um, but there's still around 7,000 languages still to translate. That's a lot. And, and uh, the article I read says one in five people in this world still do not have the word of God in their language. One in five people. So we think that the work, the, the work is undone, right? It's unfinished. We as Christians and, 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 and those that, that, that print and translate, I know not all of us are able to translate the Bible into a foreign language, but the work is unfinished. It is undone. It's continuing to grow uh, what we are doing as Christians and, and being able to spread the gospel. When we think of around the world, the countries that, that do not have not just the Bible in their language, but don't have anyone to share the gospel with those in those countries. When uh, we've heard this year, we've heard missionaries from, from France that came in, when Rachel was, is in Africa, in one of those countries that came in, when, when Primo Baptist International Mission sends a missionary, they send a missionary to a country that has less than 2% of Christians within that country. Now that's hard to imagine, a developed country like France, has less than 2% Christians in that country. It's hard to imagine that a country like Japan has less than 2% Christians within that country. But that is the fact. That is what we're facing in this world. We are in this country in the point to think that we have not only the freedom to worship, but the Word of God is available to anybody that wants to read it. You can't go to a hotel room without opening up a door and finding the Word of God, right? Go down the street, you pick up, there's different tracks that are available. And anyone that's seeking the Word of God, any church house for the most part in this country will give them a free Bible if they just ask for it. We do that as well. And so when we think about it, uh, outside of this country, how Christianity still has grown, um, and it has been able to gain access in areas, the work is still unfinished. And that's the theme of our mission's work this year. But it's more so than just this country. When you think about in our hometowns, in our communities, in our families, amongst those that we have contact with, if you think about those that are still maybe in the essence of unreached, think about the kids in our community that still has not heard the good news of Jesus Christ. You know, I've talked uh, over the years uh, how shocked I've been at, at talking with different parents. Uh, the fact that many kids don't even know the true story of Christmas. Let them know, know what even Easter means about. And we're not talking about kids on the other side of the country. We're talking about kids that live next door to us. Kids that live on the same street that we worship. Families that we work with. That is what we're talking about. And so when we look at that, the work is unfinished. The work that was started with the apostles that, that are commanded there, that Christ said, go ye therefore and teach all nations, not just your community. They didn't just there and spread the gospel in Jerusalem, they, but they went into Samaria and Judea and to the uttermost parts. They went and not just the people that, that was like minded of them, but all of those they went out and they spread the gospel. The work is still unfinished. When we think of our Christian lives, personally, what are things that we have done? Maybe God has called us or spoken our hearts to do on His behalf that maybe is unfinished, that, that we had the priorities or we had, we felt the Lord lay on our heart and we began a work that just seems to be unfinished. See, I think about this topic of a finished and in a way, we can rationalize when we think that, you know, we've already said that time Time, a lot of us don't have excess time when we think of that. But it's all the way that we prioritize. It's all the things that we look and what we think is important to us in life. If it's important to you, you will prioritize it. Pretty simple. You know, if there's a television show that we want to watch, we're going to record it or we're going to be there. If it's important to us, we are going to watch it. And so is it not the same thing when it comes to the work of God that it should be important to us? Should we prioritize that in our life to understand that the work of God is unfinished? Not just in around the world, but in our communities, in our neighborhoods, and those that we have in contact every day. The work is not done. When we think of the subject of being unfinished, I, I think about sometimes when we think, and we kind of smile and we look at each other. Yeah, there's that honey to do list that is unfinished. But you know, there's also things in our past that, that is unfinished that may weigh us down today. Maybe conversations that, 
that we should have had with loved ones and, and relationships that's festered because we've not finished a, a conversation that we really needed to have. Maybe there's things in our past that, that is unfinished that we need to rectify, that we need to, to do in our life. Maybe it's a relationship we started with Christ that we walked away from. When we say here that, that Paul tells the church of Philippi that he had to have begun a good work, we'll perform it until the day of Christ. But as free will, we can walk away from that work that he's working in our lives. So maybe it's a relationship we started, or maybe it's just, maybe we had a relationship, but what we have done for the Lord may have, over the years, may have just kind of not been that priority in our life. There's a lot of things that just because when we look at unfinished things in our life, it may weigh us down. It may be of the essence that we think um, that it bothers us. It, it gives us stress or anxiety or, or, or just what we go through in life. But when I think about all the things, that I think every one of us has something that is unfinished or past undone in life. I wonder if any of us at the end of life can look back when we take our last breath and say, we finished everything we set out to accomplish. I don't know if anyone's been able to say that, except for one man. There's only one man to ever live that has finished everything that he set out to do, and that was Jesus Christ. You know, not only did he fill all the prophecies of old that he set out to fulfill and filled them to a T that God has written in the prophets, but he finished a work here that he had the mission to do. And, and it's one that when we think and we study and we look at the life of Christ, not just being fully God or fully, fully man as well, that we understand that it wasn't easy for Christ to live a life here on this earth, just like it's hard for us every day. As the scripture tells us, he was tried and tempted in all ways that we are. We see that as he agonized in the garden because he knew what he was about to go through on the cross. Not just physically, but emotionally and the separation he was going to have between him and God and taking upon the sins of the world. But what is one of the last things he said when he hung on the cross? He said, it is finished. You see, Christ finished the work that he set out to do. When he was here on earth. Not, there, there's been nobody here on earth since that has finished everything that they set out to do except for Jesus Christ. And that same man who set that out to, to do that work is doing a work in us today. If we think of that in the essence of a potter just molding us as clay and molding us, and we may not know the work that he's doing in us, but there's a beautiful masterpiece that he's making after us. I thought about those that carve big blocks of wood. We've seen them at the fair over the year, over the years. Michelle and I saw it on vacation down in Tennessee. They take these big logs or stumps that they, they cut out and they begin with their chainsaws and they begin to carve out maybe a black bear or an eagle or something of that nature. And when they begin, and if you look at that artist in that block of wood, sometimes it's hard to imagine what is in their mind that they're making, right? You take that, and if you sit there for long enough, an hour or whatever, and the, the work piece begins to come together. The work piece begins to come, and you begin to say, oh, that makes sense. You know, that's the same thing in our life. God sees our life, and he sees a masterpiece. He sees what he's working through in our life. And when we look at our life at the time, or others look at our life, we may not understand it. We may not understand the hardships that we go through. We may not understand why we have a virus that we're dealing with. Why that people that we love are dying or that we can't be able to be with them. But God is working all things for his good, for his perfection. You see, we are his masterpiece. And even though we may not see it, we don't understand it, doesn't mean that God is not in control. He is in control. He is molding and making us on who uh, we ought to be. I think there's an old kid song about that. He's making me um, on who he wants me to be. And that's exactly what it is. That doesn't just end with us when we're a child. But all of our lives that God is still working in our lives. So I challenge us today. When we think of our lives, where are we at? What are things in our lives that are unfinished? Where are we at with our relationship with Christ? And and. and and I, I, I've said this, maybe I didn't explain it clean enough when I began here. Uh, you know, we don't work our way to salvation. You know, when we accept Christ in our life, you know, that work is done there. We are saved in that. 
But God continues to work in our lives. You know, it's not something that we just accept and we walk away and say, we're good. No, we accept Christ in our life. And because of what he's done for us, then we should be motivated to do for him as well in our life. We should be motivated to serve him because we are unworthy of the forgiveness that's offered by Jesus Christ. That's exactly what it means. Um, As I draw this to a close, in Hebrews, one of the more famous verses, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2 says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endureth the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. The writer of Hebrews says he is the author and what? The finisher of our faith. You see, faith is something, as we've talked for several weeks, I know Pastor Mark spoke on it uh, when I was gone, faith is something that, that we that, that we believe in, that we don't see, we believe and put our faith on Jesus Christ. But as the, if you've been being part of our Sunday evening Bible study, we've seen how the disciples' faith was one as we read the Gospels as they continue to struggle with their faith. Even all the way up to when Christ was hanging on the cross, Peter struggled with his faith, did he not? But when we began to go into Acts in the New Testament, we began to see more of the boldness of the apostles. The work that they would be able to stand and do. When they were taken to prison or they were persecuted, you know that when we look back, they look like different men than they were in the Gospels, right? Because they were working their faith. They began to be stronger and trusting in Jesus Christ. And that's exactly like it is with us. Trust in Jesus Christ. Even though we may not see the horizon, the sun is there, ready to come up in the morning. Even though we may not know what's on the other side of the mountain, the Lord is there. The Lord is with us. Just put our trust in Him. He's never let us down before. We may have let Him down, but He's never let us down. Maybe we're fighting a battle today that's different than we've ever fought before. Continue to put your faith and your trust in Him. We could all be standing this morning. Leslie, Dan, if you would come today. I don't know what burden may be on your heart today. I don't know what we go through in life. But I ask you today, is there works in your life that you find yourself unfinished? Maybe things that, that that's personal to you that nobody else knows that, that you find yourself unfinished. Let's put our trust in the Lord and allow us to allow Him to finish the work that He has begun. We all bow our heads this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you today. We thank you for your word today. We we thank you for the fact that you have never given up on us. We may have turned our back on you, but you have never given up on us. Through those same eyes that you see us fail, you look at us with forgiveness. You offer grace. Today, Lord, as we gather here today, And we pray to you. We ask that you speak to hearts. You speak to minds. That you comfort in a way that only you can. Open up doors that we thought may have been closed. Motivate us and and, and speak to us of the things that are in this world that may be unfinished work. That you called us to do. Lord, you know the hurt. And the brokenness in this world. That is why that you came to die for us. And there are so many. Millions of this world. That still do not know you. Or today. There may be somebody that's gathered with us in the sanctuary. Or watching online. That do not know you today. Or speak to their hearts. Draw them to you. This very hour. In Jesus name. Amen. Every head bowed and every eyes closed this morning. No one looking around. Having our without having our traditional altar call this morning. I wonder, is there anyone here today? Anyone in this church house today that may have never accepted Christ into your heart? And by just putting your hand up and putting it back down, no one looking around, I won't embarrass you or call you out. If you just want to put your hand up and back down and say, Today, I want to accept the Lord in the right there be anyone today who 
Maybe there's someone here today that that you know that if the Lord comes back, or if you take your last breath, that you're not where you need to be with Him. Is there anyone here today, being honest, just wants to put their hand up and back down? <laughs> would like to rededicate their life, or would like to, to be, get back on track? Lastly, this morning, maybe, I'm sure there's many requests that we may have, personal requests of ourselves or others. Is there anyone that may have a prayer request that we can pray for um, without speaking that? I see that hand. Any other hands this morning? I see those hands across the building. Any other hands today that I can pray for before we close? Several hands this morning. Heavenly Father, you see those hands and know those hearts. You know the burdens that we all face. Lord, today, I ask that you speak to those hearts in comfort. May they know this very moment and very hour that you are in control of the situation. Give them peace that passes all understanding. In Jesus' name, amen. This time we'll have Dan lead us up song. Thank you for being with us. Uh, real quickly, before we dismiss, you go ahead and turn the uh, light feed off today. Um, we got one item.